Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I was doing my morning boa checks and another boa litter has been born. These are Suriname True Red Tail Boas. This is a first time breeding female from a bloodline unrelated to all my other boas in my collection. Crossed with one of my males, a hold back from 2016. So I'm really excited about the results of this. I'm gonna go take a look at the babies, take the mother out, get her cleaned up, get the cage cleaned up, and we'll see exactly what the results of this cross are. So please stay tuned. So I took a, just a real brief look when I was doing my checks and it looked like a nice litter. But uh, take a closer look here. So there's the female. And she's actually quite a small boa. She's eight years old and she's only about maybe four and a half or five feet. So I don't know if she's uh, like a dwarf or something, but she is uh, bred by uh, Russell LaFleur and she's not related to my other bloodline. So it's good to have some new blood in the collection. And there you can see the babies and um, not sure if she's going to be aggressive. She's normally pretty chill, but you know, they do get more aggressive when the babies are born because obviously they want to protect them and she looks quite aroused. So I'm just going to stop the camera. I'm going to just take her out. I'm going to give her a soak in some lukewarm water, get her nice and cleaned up, get that baby smell off her, hopefully calm her down a bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to take some pictures because since I started making these videos, I've been actually taking less pictures, if any at all, of my boa litters. And I always want to have some good still pics, so I'm going to take this opportunity to take some nice still pics as well. Just thought I'd bring you back in before I take the mother out because, oddly, she seems quite calm. So, you know, I've been able to, you know, touch her and kind of move her around. Uh, you know, sometimes these female boas are just really, really cranky after they give birth, even ones that are normally docile. Sometimes you catch the birth like immediately after they give birth and they're kind of tired. I don't know, this one, these boas seem like they've been on the ground quite a while. They were probably born in the middle of the night, maybe like five, six, seven hours ago. So maybe this female's just kind of over them, you know. She's just, you know, done her thing and, you know, they're ready to go off into the world on their own and make it or break it. But uh, looks like a really, really nice litter. No slugs, which is always a great thing. I don't see any stillborns. And, you know, I normally I would never do this with a female that just gave birth. But you can see, you know, very docile. So every bow is different. But I'm going to go ahead, get her soaking, and we'll take out the babies. Okay, the mother's soaking, and there's the babies. And... Looks like a real nice litter. I'd say maybe about a dozen or so. And you can see most of these guys are out of the amniotic sacs, at least partially. You can see some remnants of the goo, an umbilical cord there. And then importantly, I don't see any slugs, as I mentioned. And as you know, these slugs are unfertilized embryos, unfertilized eggs, I should say are kind of the bane of the boa breeder's existence. Not only are they a potential baby boa that didn't happen because it was a slug, but they can also cause a lot of complications during uh, birth of the boa. So it's always great to not have these slugs. Let's see. There was a close up. These look like really beautiful babies. Some really nice tails, some really nice patterns. And then they look kind of different from my other boas. I mean, these guys are at least, you know, not completely related. They're at least, um, because the mother was different, different bloodline. So good to have some diversity in the collection. You can see some of them are kind of still getting out of the amniotic sacs. There's one right there with the head kind of poking out. But the amniotic sacs are just mostly deteriorated at this point. Not a huge amount of goo. The goo is just kind of the afterbirth and the fluids and the deteriorated amniotic sacs. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get these guys into another container. Just my standard 14 gallon uh, plastic storage tub sterilite slash whatever brand I think these are some other brand because they were out of the sterilites 
and we'll give them a count and see how they look. That, some of them have, look like they have this really nice kind of reddish pinkish blushing on them so be nice to see these guys up close. Now the babies are in a big sterilite tub and it's a really nice litter. I counted 11 and they all look nice and healthy. No stillborns. It's just some really beautiful patterns on these guys. You can see just how nice the patterns are and the tails even though they haven't shed yet they just look so nice and bright and lots of nice color in this litter and I'm sure these guys are gonna look amazing after they shed. The other thing that's kind of noteworthy these babies are pretty big you know they're almost as big if not as big as the litter I had a couple weeks ago from the Prometheus bloodline that are really big babies. So it's quite surprising because the female that gave birth to these is probably my smallest adult Suriname at probably just under five feet. So she was carrying quite a big litter. I mean, 11 big babies in a small female is a pretty big, you know, pretty large proportion of its total body mass. So she did real well and she'll just have to put all that weight back on. But really lovely litter, really happy with this litter. I'm just going to let them, you know, chill out for a while. I'm going to come back in a few hours and change the paper towels, get rid of all this goo. You can see there's quite a bit of goo at the bottom of the pile. And usually when I'm transferring them, I like to bring as much of the goo as possible. You don't want to like break off the amniotic or the uh, umbilical cord or disturb anything as much as you have to. Because if you break the umbilical cord, you can, you can get a little bit of bleeding. Usually it just kind of falls off. I notice right on the left of the screen there, there's a really nice one that looks like it's got a lot of like pinks and red coloration. It's still partially in the amniotic sac, but that one will probably be a real screamer. But there's just, I can see just a lot of really nice boas in this litter. Just a, Really nice result. Couldn't be more pleased. You know, great for a first time mother, no slugs, no stillborns, and 11 really beautiful babies. The mother's been soaking for a little while, getting cleaned up. And I just wanted to give you a shot uh, for a size reference. This is a 14 gallon sterilite tub. It's about 23 inches long by about 16 inches wide. So you can see she fits quite comfortably in there to soak. So you can do the math, you know, do the comparison. But she's, I'm guessing she's probably about four and a half, maybe five feet. But she is a small CERN, uh, you know, it's my smallest adult. For a while she was just didn't seem to be really growing very much and I actually increased her feeding. You know, she was getting a, a mouse about every 10 days to two weeks when she was, you know, younger. I tried, you know, weekly for a little while, but she was just a, you know, small, small animal. So it'll be interesting to see if this small size can be passed on to the babies. There she is back in a vision boa rack. This is a 30 by 40 inch tub and although these tubs are sm too small for the vast majority of adult true red tails for this female they work just fine so as i mentioned she's eight years old i don't think she's going to get that much bigger than this if at all she's just in the back there a lot of you guys i've mentioned this female before a lot of people have been asking me if she's a dwarf or if there's a possibility of like a dwarf bloodline of true red tail because people don't want a huge animal and I'd say, well, she's not necessarily a dwarf, but she certainly has the genes for small size. Because you know, this animal was raised under the same conditions as my other animals. And she just, you know, didn't get all that big. The father of this litter is a pretty typical size um, male from 2016. He's maybe about six feet. I'll show you him in a few minutes. So I don't know if, you know, if these babies are going to be really small. But I'd say they have the genetic propensity certainly to possibly exhibit a small size uh, you know, due to the small size of the female. 
And this female also has some really, really beautiful markings and just a gorgeous example of a true red tail other than her small size. So I just really like this animal. We'll just have to see how big the babies get and uh, if there is a possibility of a dwarf bloodline. But right now she did great. She lost a lot of weight, as you can imagine. She looks really deflated because she's so small and had all those babies inside of her. So she'll get a nice, well-deserved rest in this clean enclosure. I'll give her a rat tomorrow morning and then we'll start to put the weight back on again. Of course, she's not going to breed next year, possibly in 2023 or 2024. She may have a litter if things go well and she puts the weight back on. It's been a while. I just came to change the paper towels and you can see there's still quite a bit of goo and afterbirth in there. So although I just put fresh paper towels, they're kind of all gunked up already. But that's fine I'll just have to change them in another couple hours and it might take a day or two for all of this goo to clear but I don't want to like force it or pull it off but uh, just a really beautiful litter and I love all my baby bows of course but there's just something completely breathtaking about newborn true red tails and these guys are no exception there's a close-up so you can see how beautiful these baby bows are and so what really stands out to me about these this litter are just the patterns and especially some of the patterns between the saddles. These guys have a lot of really cool inter saddle markings. Um, you know, the boas will often have these smudges or dots or even like little smiley face looking markings between their saddles. And there's a lot of cool variety in this litter. And then these tails are just really nice and mold and the, the color just really stands out. And of course these guys haven't shed yet so they're going to be much brighter after they shed in about a week and a half. There's just another view of them and you know sometimes I should just keep my mouth shut and you know let the boas do the talking. These guys almost look like a work of art with all these really cool patterns and shapes and different forms uh, of the saddles. As usual, you can see they're kind of piled on top of each other. This is just how baby boas hang out. I think it gives them comfort to have safety in numbers. In the wild, it would probably distract a predator. You know, if a predator did attack, it might get, you know, one of the babies, but the rest would get away. And so they're just kind of chilling out over the hot spot. I have a simple heat mat set to maintain 90 degrees, keep them nice and warm. And that's covering about half of the enclosure. And they'll just stay in this Sterilite 14 gallon tub for about a week and a half. Then they'll go to their individual uh, uh, tubs in a rack system and they should shed about the same time after which time they'll get fed their first meal. There always seems to be one guy who doesn't want to hang out in the pile like this guy on the edge. But you can see I also have a water dish in there to maintain the humidity. They might soak a little bit, although they're probably not going to drink yet. There you can see the main pile. So really nice litter, really happy about these guys. I imagine I am going to be holding some of these back, you know, although I'm not going to hold back many, if any, from my other Suriname litters. This is one from an unrelated female, so I want to hold some back just to maintain the genetic diversity of my breeding group. And then also maybe if I can breed selectively for small size in Surinams, we'll just have to see. So I probably will select, you know, two or three of these to hold back. But the rest I expect to be available probably in about two months, so probably around October. But, you know, please stay tuned to future videos for updates on this. I'm going to wrap up the video by showing you guys the father of the litter. This is a 2016 male holdback from my bloodline that I call the Picasso bloodline. And so this guy, this is his first litter and <clears throat> he's quite a nice animal. I've actually have several litters from his older brother whose name is Picasso appropriately. 
and that male was born in 2014 was you know definitely the best holdback from that litter i decided to hold this guy back from my 2016 litter which has the exact same parentage and so this guy has pretty similar markings overall to picasso but he's definitely got more of uh, red and pink colors to him unfortunately he's going to shed now so his colors aren't the brightest but this is like a super colorful animal and i think some of the colors show through in the babies that uh, from the litter that he just produced so real happy with this results of this uh, cross um, can't wait to see these babies after they shed and as i mentioned i'll likely hold back a few to increase the diversity of my breeding colony and possibly try to establish a small if not a dwarf uh, line of true red tail boas but there will be quite a few babies available and so stay tuned i'll announce in future videos the details of how they're doing and when they are going to be on sale uh, but real nice boas this guy is really cool male i show my you know his older brother quite a bit you know but this guy is just as breathtaking as picasso and you know a little bit more colorful as well just really nice i'm just really lucky to have such a nice group of suriname red tail boas and you know this year has been really good for me as far as the litters that i've had um just super happy i think you know suriname seem to be my bread and butter i don't quite have as much luck with some of the other types of true red tails but it seems like the surinams pretty much whenever i pair them up i get really really nice litters so hopefully i can continue that in 2023 so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and it was somewhat uh, informative as always if you have any questions or comments feel free to shoot me a line thanks for watching and enjoy your boas